This. My mean task would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crabbed, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness had never like executor. I forget, but these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors. Most busy lest when I do it. Alas, now pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you were enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. My father is hard at study. Pray now, rest yourself. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray give me that, I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will it is, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I may set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda? Oh, my father, I have broke your hest to say so. <laughs> Admired. Miranda, indeed the top of admiration, worth what's dearest in the world. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women, never any with such so full soul. But some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you, oh, you, so perfect, so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remembers save from my glass mine own. Nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape beside yourself to like of. But I prattle something too wildly, and my father's precepts I therein do forget. I am in my condition, Miranda, a prince. I do think a king. I would not so. And would no more endure this wooden slavery to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me slave to it, and for your sake am I this patient log man. <laughs> Do you love me? Oh, heaven! O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound and crown what I profess with kind event, if I speak true. If hollowly, invert what best is boded me to mischief. I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, honor you. I'm a fool to weep at what I'm glad of. Fair encounter of two most rare affections. Heavens rain grace on that which breeds between them. Wherefore weep you? At mine 
unworthiness that dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. This is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself, the bigger bulk it shows. Hence, bashful cunning, and prompt me, plain and holy innocence. I am your wife, if you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing as bondage heir of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. And now farewell till half an hour hence. A thousand thousand. So glad of this as they, I cannot be, who are surprised with all. But my rejoicing at nothing can be more. I'll to my book. For yet ere supper time must I perform much business appertaining. Tell not me. When the bud is out, we will drink water, not a drop before. Therefore, bear up and boredom. Servant monster, drink to me. Servant monster, the folly of this island. They say there's but five upon this isle. We are th three of them. The other two be brained like us, the state totters. Drink, servant monster. When I bid thee, thy eyes are almost set in thy head. Oh, where should they be set else? He were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail. <laughs> Mooncalf, speak once in thy life, if thou beest a good Mooncalf. How does thy honor? Let me lick thy shoe. I'll not serve him, he's not valiant. Thou liest, most ignorant monster. I am in case to jostle a constable. Why, thou demolished fish, thou! Was there ever a man a coward that hath drunk so much sack as I today? Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? Lo, how he mocks me! Wilt thou let him, my lord? Lord, quoth he, that a monster should be such a natural. Lo, lo again! Bite him to death, I prithee! Trinculo. Keep a good tongue in your head. If you prove a mutineer, the next tree. The poor monster's my subject, and she shall not suffer indignity. I thank my noble lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Mary, I will kneel and repeat it. I will stand, I, and so shall Trinculo. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest! Thou liest, thou jest, monkey thou! I would my valiant master would destroy thee! I do not lie! Trinculo, if you trouble him any more in his tail, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. Why? I said nothing. Mum, 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 mum. Then no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayst knock a nail into his bead. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a pied ninny's this, thou scurvy patch! I do beseech thy greatness. Give him blows and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink not but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run into no further danger. Interrupt the monster one word further, 
And by this hand, I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stockfish of thee. Why? What did I? I did nothing. I'll go farther off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that! <laughs> As you like this, give me the lie another time. I did not give the lie. Out of your wits and bearing to a pox on your bottle. This can sack and drinking do. A moraine on your monster, and the devil take your finger. <laughs> now forward with your tail. Prithee, stand further off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand farther. Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep, where thou mayst brain him, having first seized his books, or with a log batter his skull, or punch him with a stake, or cut his weasand with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but a sot as I am nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rudely as I. Oh, but his books. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen. Save our graces! And Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Excellent. Give me thy hand. I'm sorry I beat thee, but while thou livest, keep a good tongue in your head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? Aye, on mine honor. This will I tell my master. Thou makest me merry. I am full of pleasure. At thy request, monster, I will do reason, any reason. Art thou afeard? No, monster, not I. Be not a The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that, if I then had waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds, methought, would open and show riches ready to drop upon me, that when I waked, I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That shall be by and by. Lead, monster, we'll follow. No further, sir. My old bones ache by your patience. I needs must rest me. Old Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. He is drowned, whom thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad that he's so out of hope. Do not, for one repulse, forego the purpose that you resolve to effect. The next advantage will we take thoroughly. Let it be tonight. For now they are oppressed with travel. They will not, nor cannot, use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say tonight, no more. What harmony is this? Uh, My good friends, hark! Marvelous, sweet music. Give us kind keepers, heavens! What are this? You are three men of sin and destiny that hath to instrument this lower world and what it isn't, the never-surfeited sea hath caused to 
belch up you. And on this island where man doth not inhabit, you, amongst men, being most unfit to live. Remember, but that's my business to you, that you, three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed unto the sea which hath acquitted him and his innocent child. For which foul deed the powers, delaying not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace, thee of thy son, Alonzo, they have left and do pronounce by me lingering perdition worse than any death can be at once, shall stick by step. Attend you and your ways, whose wrath to guard you from, which here is this most desolate isle, else falls upon your hands, is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. Why, in the name of something holy, sir, why you stand in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous. Methought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than e'er plummet sounded, and with him there lie mudded. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions o'er. I'll be thy second. All three of them are desperate. The great guilt, like poison given to work, a great time after now begins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you that are of suppler joints, follow them swiftly and hinder them from what this ecstasy may now provoke them to. 